<laughs> hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm uh, here in South New Jersey, and I'm with Chris Leone. Leone? Leone. Yeah, Leone. See? Good Italian kid. And James Lou. James is from the Turtle Conservancy, and uh, we're actually walking this road in these beautiful estuaries here because this is prime diamondback terrapin habitat. And what's really cool is both these gentlemen are involved in diamondback terrapin conservation. So what we're doing now is looking for any nesting females, which, what do you think, uh, Chris? It's the end of the season. Um, they typically go to mid-July and we're there. Um, and it's also ridiculously hot. <laughs> yeah, it so is. So if they were out today, but look they would have been out earlier. Look at this. So this is something we've been seeing a lot of, huh? This is uh, predated nests. And um, we're on this kind of service road here that goes out into the marsh. And we've just been seeing tons of uh, exposed nests. So what's the goal here? If we don't see a nesting female, um, what would you like to have happen? Well, if we get lucky, we can find some nests that were laid earlier this morning so we can remove them for incubation. But so far, not seeing much. Yeah. But yeah. Except that. Oh, get out of here. Oh no! Mm -hmm. Come on, that sucks. This looks like some kind of, was this a roadkill? It looks like it was crushed. Oh no. Most of the locals are good at looking out for them, but you get some that are just unfortunately oh. oblivious. Oh how, man. How, how, how fresh is it? Am I allowed, since this is protected species, even in death, we am have, I allowed to touch it? Yeah, we have permits. permits. We have permits. So, do you want to touch it? Since you're permitted, go ahead and just inspect it. Man. Yeah, see, we wouldn't even be able to check this female for a microchip because she's been cleaned out. So we unfortunately don't know if this was ours. Shoot. And see, she's been here a little while too yeah. because her color and everything is wow. gone. Well, that's kind of a bummer, man. Who's allowed um, to drive out on this road, Chris? We are. I mean, people come down here, you know, and I don't know if they're them or not. Okay. Fish or yeah. just, yeah. is that what they're doing? Yeah, you know, I mean, fortunately, it is not a law New Jersey to use a turtle excluder device. So even though they only cost three dollars to buy and insert into your crab pots, some of these folks don't care to do that and uh, you lose some of them that way. So males. okay so what happens is the turtles get caught in the crab pots they have no way to get out and they drown because yeah. they're air breathing vertebrates. Um, but this is the habitat. Now how many um, you were mentioning that your wife Casey and you both come out here and you You'll pit tag animals. Um, how many have you found? Last year we pit tagged over 400, and this year we've pit tagged about 200. Um, and then whenever we run out of the pit tags, we just switch over to notching. But obviously, the, the pit tagging really helps because it's a it's an invisible way to identify these turtles. So if someone were to poach them and then luckily get caught, and we you know, the animals are confiscated takes is a scanner and basically you know if they're coming across these turtles and they're notched if they notice that they may not touch them but not knowing there's a microchip in them you know it's it's kind of an invisible way to give them a, a, a real identification well you know what one thing i can promise is when we go back to garden state turtle and tortoises facility chris's facility uh we're going to show you the incubator and we'll show you some of the rescued terrapins that he has uh and we'll talk more about uh, most of the terrapin eggs are in here and then there's some up there. Wild. Here, let's have a shot of some terrapin eggs. So this is uh, basically what happens when you guys find e find nests. You get them uh, out and in here as fast as possible. Yep. So how many years have you been working with uh, Diamondback Terrapins for the state? This is the second year. Okay. So pull them out, check on them. So I like how you're doing, you're using vermiculite. Yep. And then uh, explain to us a little bit about how you're incubating them. Huh? So there, there's different layers of eggs in here. Um, so I, I, I got to look at the notes, but um, there's probably about 275 eggs in this one. And uh, each shelf is a different temperature. The higher you go, the, the higher the incubation, and then the lower, um, the lower ones are cooler. Because we obviously don't want to produce all one sex for okay. a while. And uh, this is... Uh, how the eggs develop pretty much. They stay in here. We have all the notes written down and um, you can tell these eggs are fertile because they're so white. So gotcha. when they're first laid, they're really opaque or even pink colored. 
and then within 24 hours they form a white dot and that means the egg is starting to chalk or band and then they become completely white and depending on the incubation temperature they can hatch it in as little as 45 days and sometimes up to 70. So pretty okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Really doing good work out here. This is how, and you know, one of the things that a lot of people who watch the video, uh, watch my channel actually, uh, like to know, learn about is how do they get involved in uh, a job with reptiles or, how, you know, how do you get involved in doing this conservation work there, Chris? Pretty much just, you know, my whole life, I, I've just always maintained a good, healthy relationship with fish and wildlife, always doing everything by the books and just showing appreciation and a want to be involved in conservation. And, you know, Kathy Lacey started the Terrapin Project on Long Beach Island in 2011. And then thanks to the Turtle Conservancy, you know, we had just kind of all joined forces, made sure that the per permits worked out and everything. And uh, so I started helping with that project early on. And then um, we realized that the Terrapins were in a lot of trouble down here. So we approached the state with what was going on. We had to put, to go, put together a portfolio of all, you know, unfortunately like roadkill and stuff. Yep. And uh, they deemed the road unsafe. For the turtles so we got the permission to continue the project down here and um it's been great that's awesome you're a custodian of the animals in your uh, neighborhood like a, a shelled mr rogers i'm a 24-hour watch there you go <laughs> he's like the night's watch but um, hopefully for him the ending won't be as dissatisfying as that tv show <laughs> anyway let's go look at some rescued terrapins right now All right, so we're inside here at uh, Garden State Turtle and Tortoise, and these are the rescued Diamondback Terrapins. This is basically uh, what we were looking for out there in the wild, which we saw all the predated, predated, is that the right word? Predated, 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 predated nests. I also learned something else new today that I'm going to share with you guys because it's fun to learn. Nathaniel from the Turtle Conservancy informed me of root predation which is pretty intense because that's actually the roots of the plants growing into the nest because where these tortoises, or excuse me, turtles nest, the soil is very, uh, well, there's not a lot of nutrients in it. So the, the plants themselves will just go into a turtle nest and suck up some of that good stuff that the turtles are trying to eat, you know, right. the yolk and all that biomass in there. Anyway, we learned something. That's kind of why I do what I do. Now let me shut up and learn something from you. Where did these animals come from? These are rescues, right? These are rescues. We don't know where they came from. So that's why they unfortunately can't be released. And a lot of times there are uh, rescues like this. Okay. Um, you know, that's the unfortunate part about these animals is that they can't go back to the wild because there's no locality data on them. Um, but they have all been through a pretty rough situation. Some of them came in with fungus and terrible shell rot. Um, and we've gotten most of that healed up now. And these are just in holding tanks, um, just trying to keep them as clean and as content as possible. And uh, like I said, unfortunately, these cannot go back to the wild, but we do uh, sometimes deal with situations where we do know exactly where the animals came from and they get an even happier ending where they do get to go right back to where they were born. So basically this is your quarantine zone to get these animals' bodies up to shape. I know yeah. one in this enclosure had a neurological problem. I don't know if yeah. that's the one or not. No, but, this um, is... Uh, this is one of the ornate diamondback that's terrapins. Beautiful. So that's a different uh, subspecies. Yeah. How many different subspecies of diamondback terrapin are there in the United States? There are seven right now. Okay. Uh, they're all subspecies of each other. There's talk about that changing, you know, the, the taxonomic debate on all these animals is always ongoing. But, um, you know, talking about some of the situations that these animals have been in, this is some old shell rock here that's just about healed up. It's still got some rough edges there. But, uh, you know, these things, when they first came in, in 2017, they were just covered in fungus, covered in shell rot. Some of them did not make it. These are, what you're witnessing here are the survivors. Gotcha. So this is a different subspecies right here. Yep, um, that's Malachlemys terrapin terrapin, which is the northern. Okay. And this is Malachlemys terrapin macrospilota, which is the ornate. And, and where this, would these be found in the wild? These guys are down in Florida. Okay. And these are the ones that are up here. Yeah, that's really cool, man. It's awesome to have such a representation. And these guys, uh, many, many times you'll find these in Chinatown that are being illegally sold for food yep. from time to time. Um, years ago, I also got a, um, a rescue of uh, Northerns. Mm -hmm. And same deal. These animals, as you know, in the food market are just kept in really substandard uh, conditions. And that leads to their overall decline in health. So once you get them, there's going to be mortality yeah. uh, when you're dealing with that, that kind of um, you know, situation. 
But the good news is, is that they're in a really amazing part of the world here at Garden State Turtle and Tortoise. These animals are going to be well looked after for the rest of their lives. And uh, if you guys want to help out uh, the good work that Chris and the Turtle Conservancy are doing, James, what do you think we could do? Uh, is there a specific place they can go for the Conservancy to where they can, uh, can put go, funds towards this? Uh, you can go to a few different websites. You can go to turtleconservancy.org. You can go to uh, Terrapin Nesting Project. NJTerrapin.org. Uh, and NJ NJ Terrapin. Terrapin. Yeah. Yeah. All right, very cool. We'll put links in the description, guys. I just wanted to uh, show some of the good work that you folks are doing here for a native species of beautiful uh, brackish water turtle. That's right, they're brackish water. These are animals found in salt estuaries. Beautiful and unique species. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll have more fun content for you soon. See ya.